All right. Hello. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a interesting mask that I just got in the mail. This is technically a rebranded um, TF6D, but the kit that it's in is the XML40, which is humorous to some American viewers. Now, um, this was a civil defense slash fire department kit, and it's really, um, I mean, obviously I can't really read a lot of the carrier, but it was apparently made for smoke escape, but the filter covers a pretty wide variety of chemicals. Um, and it comes in this pretty kind of nice plastic vinyl tote with a lot of text on it. It's got what I assume to be a bunch of chemical names, and then the concentrations and how long it'll last. Um, some more safety text over here, and then some very basic picture instructions on the bottom. Now... I guess I'll just open this. This is one of my only complaints about the bag, is that if you want to unzip it, it seems like you really have to fold this up, and that's not not exactly easy to do, uh, particularly compared to some bags. It's not a complicated task, but it is a little bit cumbersome to do. So, get that unzipped. Oh, uh, we have two more packing slips in here. Now, this one was expired when I got it. Uh, it was very cheap. Actually, it was free. Um, let's see, I think I saw a number. Yeah, it says 1998, but that might be related to the ISO approval. I'm not entirely sure, but this kit is expired. When we get the filter out, I'll take a better look at it, and we can probably figure out when exactly this kit uh, uh, lost service. All right, so here's the face piece out, and on the mannequin head. Um, as you can see, it's very similar to the TF-60, like I mentioned earlier. The only real uh, difference that I've noticed is that this face piece actually comes with a lanyard strap uh, for hanging it around your neck when you're not wearing it. However, that might be a normal feature on some uh, TF-60s. There's always minor variations when you have a lot of different companies manufacturing the same mask. Now, I'd like to point out, too, that this mask came in this very nice bag. Um, I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> I probably should have translated that. Um, but, yeah, anyway, it comes in that bag. Uh, there's another instruction sheet on the inside of the carrier that it comes with. And I think it's just a table of chemicals. Yeah, it looks like a sheet of instructions and a table of chemicals, again, for it. Um, again, all in Chinese. I'm really more looking at the, the physical aspects of the mask here. Now, face piece isn't bad. It's, you know, up to par with what I've seen for most Chinese masks lately. Uh, these rubber head harnesses are actually pretty good. I like the tabs on them. It's not the most comfortable face piece in the world, um, but it works. It works pretty well. It's The TF6 is a good design. Now, the really interesting part of this kit um, is actually the filter that it came with, since that's kind of the core of it. It's got this very nice uh, cap and rubber stopper, this nice bit of red thread between them. And then it has this rather bulky filter, um, which I think 1998 might actually be the manufacturing date. And then they put on here uh, 2007 which is most likely the expiration. So this has probably been worn out for a while. Now, it is actually a pretty broad spectrum filter. You've got uh, HCN, C6H6, chlorine. I want to say this ammonia. Gosh, it's been a while since I took a chemistry class. SO2, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, and NBC threats. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty broad, pretty broad spectrum. Of course, it's chunky. I wouldn't use this for anything other than escaping from somewhere. But you know, not bad. And uh, there it is on the head. I haven't actually tested. Yeah, I can probably do that now. Give me a second. Might as well put it on and see how bad the breathing resistance is. Although the filter is outdated. 
it is one of the heavier filters that I've seen, especially for direct chin mounting. So this will be interesting. Also note that the uh, the nose cup on the mask is slightly deformed from storage. That's fairly common with just about any mask. People always try to fit them in the smallest package possible. It's not really healthy. That's why you shouldn't live in New York. That's what they do to people there. Okay, there's actually not that much uh, resistance here. Uh, the weight's obviously a little bit irritating. And there's a little bit of a chemical smell to it, but that always happens with new masks or masks that have been boxed up for a while. As you can hear, the TS6D does actually have half-decent voice uh, transfer I guess speech membrane. Do they really have? Yeah, they do, actually. Let me pull out my other one. And you can clearly see that metal plate down there. That's the, uh, that's the voice membrane. And it actually comes across pretty clear on these. So, uh, yeah, that's really about it. Not an awful lot to say on this mask, but I do like it. Um, put a backup on the mannequin head. Pretty interesting little piece of kit. It's always interesting to find rather special purpose masks like this. And it's really cool to see uh, when you have an industrial or fire hazard that's apparently of sufficient concern that you don't stick with, uh, you know, some little escape mask, but you actually go to a full face mask with a pretty complex filter. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention in this video it was also included in the package it was this small mask um, I got one of these in the past but didn't really feel like reviewing it because it wasn't particularly interesting if I knew where it was it's in a box somewhere right now I talk about it but this one is kind of an upgrade on that model there's actually two models of these I guess you'd say because uh, some of them are 40 millimeter and this will accept well, most anything, really, I think. I think it's normalized. Give me a sec. All right, so, got some filters here. Unfortunately, I still can't find my other version of this, uh, which is not threaded, and it's a lot simpler, and the filter just kind of pops into the bottom of the mask. So, just for social interest, have your standard NATO filter. No? Okay, that's three tries. I can't get thread NATO. Soviet filter. Well, Russian filter, apologies. God. So used to saying Soviet. So weird having things that were made by them in the last 20 years. Now, this will take Gost. That is interesting. Now, of course, the next logical step is to try this on another mask. Works on TF60, which I guess I should also check for. This will thread NATO, which means it threads Gost, of course. I don't know how you do. Yeah, TF-60, good for your money. Now, next logical thing to do, going to try this on some other masks. All right, British N10. Everyone can agree this is a NATO threaded mask. And, yes. I don't like it, but it works. Next, and finally, I think I'll end the video after this before I start rambling, we have our Russian HM-2012. Alright, so good. So, in summary, this is just about universal. 
this is just about universal. This filter, I didn't actually check that. Um, good here. Yeah. Good there. So that's universal. This, however, appears to only take Russian. Filters, or, well, it even won't take, it won't even take this, actually. So this will not take uh, these. These do not work together. Uh, I know I'm really starting to ramble here, and I apologize for that, but the most likely thing is because this is just so simply and coarsely threaded compared to most other filters. Um, this is really only made, I've seen these with, with some Chinese hoses, but it's a very bare bones mask. And honestly, I wouldn't see it really as... 40 millimeter NATO, or, well, no, duh. You know what I mean? It's not really a standard thread. It's just kind of a weird, non-specific thread that works with some filters and not with others. So if you get one of these, be careful with it, because uh, it's not going to take whatever you just want to slap onto it. That said, it's a nice mask. I really like having 40 millimeter half masks. I've got a Scott Aviva 40, and it's kind of one of my favorites, because you can do a lot with it and mess around with it. Anyway, that's really it for this, uh, this video, although really it should have ended like 10 minutes ago. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. And as always, hype, thank you for sending the stuff. Uh, I enjoy reviewing it, and I, you know, enjoy really neat little pieces of equipment like the, uh, the XML40. So yeah, thanks for watching, everyone.